Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about clinical laboratory values. So this is an introductory lesson on what a reference range is, how patient factors actually influence lab values, and we'll also get into um, some of the uh, reference ranges and values of um, blood cells and also serum electrolyte levels and their implications in health. So to begin, what is a reference range? Well, a reference range is a range of values for a physiologic measurement in healthy persons usually defined as the range within which 95% of the healthy population would fall. So what they do is they look at an entire population of individuals, of healthy individuals, and they look at the range of values, and they, they find the average of those values, and then they look at the two standard deviations less than the average and two standard deviations more than the average, and then that's about 95% or 95% of the range of, um, of values. So that's how they determine a reference range. Now, a normal value is a value for a physiologic measurement that is appropriate for the subject being tested. So this means that patients themselves have certain factors or indicators that actually alter or affect their value and affect their reference range. So this means that a reference range is dependent on the population being tested, but also dependent on the individual being tested. So what does that mean? Well, patients, again, have particular indicators that would affect lab values. And now one of them is age. So um, the example is alkaline phosphatase. With alkaline phosphatase, um, newborns typically have a high level, and then this level will actually increase at uh, puberty, but will fall. Um, this Their uh, serum levels will actually fall later in life. So we always have to think about the age of the patient and how this will influence the lab value or, um, or the indicator we're actually looking at. So the next one is gender. So um, with creatine kinase, for example, uh, males typically have a higher level um, of creatine kinase than females on average. And this is typically because males have a higher muscle mass than females. So we always have to think about how gender influences um, our, our target of interest, how the gender is affecting our measurement or their, um, the measure that, that would be normal for that individual. The next one is race. So this is very important again. Um, we see with creatine kinase again, um, creatine kinase is typically higher in people of African descent. So we always have to think about race um, when it comes to um, clinical values as well. The other one um, is um, not quite related to patient um, factors, but it's related to the lab in which the test is being performed. And this means that reference ranges differ between hospitals and lab laboratories. And simply because each lab uses different equipment, may, may use different supplies, and they have different personnel. So there's always going to be variability between different laboratories. The next factor that would influence lab values is the technique. And that means that, for example, serum versus urine. Of course, um, if you take levels or you take um, a measurement from the blood as opposed to the urine, things will be different. So we always have to think about how we're taking the sample, where we're taking the sample. And the next one is events related to the patient or situational, situational effects that the patient may be undergoing prior to sample collection. And these include physical exercise, which would actually increase creatine kinase, and alcohol intake, which would actually increase gamma glutamyl transpeptidase levels. So always keep in mind what the patient was doing and um, what were some of these situations leading up to their, their sample collection. These could also affect your readout as well. So next we're going to get into some examples of different blood cells um, and their values and what this means in a clinical um, scenario. So again, all of these values I show you now are going to be just sample um, reference ranges. They are reference ranges, but each, again, as I mentioned before, each region, each hospital, and populations all have slightly different reference ranges. So just keep that in mind. So the first one I'm going to look at is erythrocytes, the most abundant cell in the blood. Um, the typical reference range that's used is 5.5 to 8.5 times 10 to the 12th per liter. Anything higher than this reference range would be polycythemia, and anything lower than this would be anemia. So the next one is lymphocytes. So lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell, and they are typically at 1.1 to 4 times 10 to the 9th per liter. And anything higher than this would be lymphocytosis, as you would see in a viral infection. And anything less than this would be lymphocytopenia. 
The next one is neutrophils, the most abundant of the white blood cells. And their typical reference range is 2 to 7.5 times 10 to the 9th per liter of blood. And anything higher than this reference range would be neutrophilia, as would be seen in a bacterial infection. And anything lower than this would be neutropenia. Another white blood cell would be monocytes, and their reference range is quite low. They're uh, at typically low levels in the blood. Their reference range is about point, um, point 0.0 to point 0.8 times 10 to the 9th per liter. Anything higher than this would be monocytophilia, and anything lower than this would be monocytopenia. Another white blood cell are the eosinophils, named because of their high level of eosin staining. And their reference range is typically um, 0 to 0.4 times 10 to the 9th per liter of blood. Anything higher than this reference range would be eosinophilia, and anything lower than this reference range would be eosinopenia. So eosinophilia is seen in allergic reactions or parasitic infections. And the last white blood cell um, that I'm going to talk about is the basophils. And they are, again, one of the lowest number of uh, white blood cells in the blood. And they are from 0 to 0.2 times 10 to the 9th per liter of blood. Anything higher than this would be basophilia or basocytophilia. And anything lower than this would be basopenia or basocytopenia. And when we look at all the white blood cells in the blood, um, typically the range is from 3.5 to 12 times 10 to the 9th per liter. And, or um, I've seen reference ranges such as 4 to 11 times 10 to the 9th as well. And just to make sure that you guys um, notice this, um, erythrocytes are counted in 10 to the 12th power, and all the white blood cells are counted from 10 to the, uh, 10 to the 9th power. So just keep that in mind, guys. So other indicators that you might see in a blood panel um, would include hemoglobin, um, the range is typically 115 to 165 or up to 180 in males. Um, and this, uh, the units are grams per liter of blood. And anything higher than this would be polycythemia. Anything lower than this range would be anemia. Um, with platelets, the range is about 130 to 400. I, um, the units are times 10 to the 9th per liter, like white blood cells. And anything higher than this would be thrombophilia or thrombocytophilia. And anything lower than this reference range would be thrombocytopenia. The, another indicator that we might see on, um, on a test would be mean cell volume, or MCV. The range is typically 76 to 100, and the units are femtoliters. And mean cell volume is just the average uh, size of erythrocytes. Another measurement that we might see on um, a, a lab test would be hematocrit. And hematocrit is different with different age groups and genders. So with newborns, it's about 0.49 to 0.54. With children, it's about 0.35 to 0.49. With males, it's about 0.4 to 0.54. And with females, it's point, um, about 0.37 to 0.47. And this is a ratio, so these are actually percentages. So hematocrit is actually the percentage of erythrocytes in the blood. And uh, the ne another one we might see is red cell distribution width. So this would be the distribution of the smallest sized red blood cell to the biggest sized of uh, red blood cell. So we call this RDW. Um, the range is about 11.5 to 14.5, and this is again a percentage. Other indicators that we might look at are iron. Um, males and females have different levels, and the, uh, the values are actually in micromoles per liter. Um, another one um, we might look at is ferritin. Ferritin is the storage form of iron, and the storage form of iron is a quite a large range, so it's hard to interpret. Um, 20 to 200 micrograms per liter. Another one we might look at is total iron binding capacity, or TIBC. The range is typically from 45 to 73, and this, um, again, is in micromoles per liter. So some of the serum electrolytes that we might see on a on an electrolyte screening panel um, would be sodium. Sodium is a very important one. The range is about 135 to 145. This is pretty consistent range among um, many different um, populations in many different regions. And the units are millimole per liter. So these are all these units I've been giving you are in SI units. And anything higher than this range would be hypernatremia. Anything lower than this range would be hyponatremia.
Another one that's very important is potassium. The range is about 3.5 to 5.1, and the units again are millimole per liter. Anything higher than this range would be hyperkalemia. Anything lower than 3.5 uh, would be hypokalemia. With calcium, we can either measure total or ionized. Total is about 2.1 to 2.5, with ionized is 1.15 to 1.35. And again, the units are millimole per liter. And anything higher um, than our reference range would be hyper, uh, hypercalcemia, and anything lower would be hypocalcemia. Another one we might look at is chloride, the chloride ion. Uh, the reference range is about 96 to 106, so this is a pretty easy one to remember, or 95 to 105. Uh, again, the units are millimole per liter. Anything higher, uh, again, is hyperchloremia, uh, and anything lower is hypochloremia. And another one is bicarbonate, which is very important. Uh, it's HCO3 minus. The range is about 23 to 29. This is a very consistent range. Uh, the units are millimole per liter or uh, milli equivalent per liter. And anything higher than this range, it, we typically think of metabolic alkalosis. Now I'll be talking about these conditions in another video as well. Other electrolytes include magnesium, 0.65 to 1.05 range, uh, millimole per liter. Uh, hypermagnesemia is higher than this range and hypomagnesemia is lower than this range. Phosphate is another very important one. Um, it's age dependent, so in children it's 1.3 to 2.3 range, in adults it's 1 to 1.5, again millimole per liter. Anything higher is uh, hyperphosphatemia, anything lower is hyper, or, or sorry, hypophosphatemia. And then related to electrolyte levels is osmolality. Now this is a very important um, one to remember as well, is uh, 285 to 295, it's very consistent range again. Um, this one is in millimole per kilogram. Um, and another one that's related to all of these is pH. Uh, 7.35 to 7.45 is the range that we all want to remember, very important um, to remember. So remember osmolality, remember pH. And the last one I want to talk about is um, the partial pressure of CO2 in the blood, which is 35 to 45, again, a very consistent range. And the units are millimeters of mercury. And anything higher would be considered hypercapnia, and anything lower would be hypocapnia. So I know there's a lot of uh, values in this lesson. There was a lot of indicators that we looked at, but the most important ones I want you guys to remember are sodium, potassium, osmolality, pH, and PCO2. Those are the most important, and they're the quite um, they're probably the easiest ones to remember too. Uh, and they're also quite um, quite consistent among different reference ranges and different labs and populations as well. Anyways, guys, this was lesson one in introduction to clinical laboratory values. I'll be posting some other videos on more clinical lab values as well. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.